I can assure you, I have not been groomed since birth to have some cushy job that even a moron like you could perform. When you were just learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies, taking over the galaxy with more cowbell, baby, yeah! Is Battlefield Earth one of the worst movies I've ever seen? Not even close. But is it one of the worst movies ever made? Probably. This film, adapted by Roger Christian from L. Ron Hubbard's novel, appeals to the lowest common denominator among moviegoers, and even they didn't like it. Battlefield Earth is exciting, but without tension or relatable characters, the film is superficial and lacking in drama. Any idiot could put explosions and alien dogfights in his movie, but even a mediocre filmmaker could make them mean something. Battlefield Earth does none of the latter. The DVD case proclaims Battlefield Earth to be Mortal Kombat meets Independence Day. In what sense? I haven't seen Mortal Kombat yet, but the fight scenes look well choreographed. The few fights in Battlefield Earth, on the other hand, are jerky and poorly edited, and are filmed with the same irritating Dutch angle used for every other scene. In all seriousness, Independence Day is a thrilling blockbuster with flawless effects and characters you care about caught in the action. But Battlefield Earth has subpar CGI, undeveloped characters, a generic hero in Barry Pepper, bland action, and a simple yet ludicrous plot. Very little in this movie makes sense. For starters, the film left me wondering why the Cyclos enslaved humanity at all. Most of the Cyclos view humans as dumb animals incapable of mining gold. So what purpose could the man-animals serve? I would assume that the Cyclos are rounding up humans for manual labor, but we never see the humans working. At best, you see them bashing up rocks for no discernible reason. For most of the movie, we see no reason for the Cyclos to enslave humanity. A slave isn't a slave if he doesn't have some sort of job. If man-animals are just a stupid nuisance, then why keep them around? Why didn't the Cyclos just send down their gas drones to exterminate the humans? Apparently, radiation has a lethal effect on the Cyclos' breathing gas. This explains how some humans have survived for a millennium after the invasion, as the Cyclos cannot reach their irradiated homes. Unfortunately, the richest gold deposits are in these areas. Knowing that Cyclos cannot mine gold from these regions, Turl trains the man-animals to mine the gold without the Cyclo leaders knowing, thus ensuring him immense wealth. The fearless Johnny, Barry Pepper, uses this as a cover to mount a resistance against the alien oppressors, using nukes and fighter jets that are still miraculously in working order after centuries in storage. While the plot is straightforward, it's hard to engage with the tedious narrative. Battlefield Earth conjures little sense of a conflict, as the Cyclos are incompetent idiots who constantly underestimate the man-animal's abilities. How can the Cyclos know nothing about a race they conquered when their buildings and relics are in plain sight? Johnny found weapons galore in Washington, Turl unwittingly gave him the freedom to revolt, and the Cyclos are ridiculously easy to defeat. 
All this leaves you with the realization that the humans could have risen up and won against the Cyclos centuries before. Thus, the film has an air of inevitability, with no tension whatsoever. The explosions are bright and flashy, but leave you numb in the same way that a Michael Bay movie does. Since the characters are dull and uninteresting, the action is just there, badly staged and hard to follow. Battlefield Earth, like Transformers 2, is exciting in the most shallow, superficial way possible. 